So my name is Sakari Keskitalo. I'm COO at the Codership, and this is a web. This is a webinar about geographical distributed clusters. But before we have the presentation presented by Philip Stoev, uh, let me just introduce Codership shortly to you. Codership was founded 2007, and back then we started the uh, Galera development. Uh, it was founded by three co-founders who had made three other MySQL clusters before starting developing the Galera cluster. And uh, they had a pretty good experience and knowledge of the drawbacks of the existing solutions and also the Galera is based on, on academic research and uh, it has a sound theory behind it. Uh, our product is a Galera cluster for MySQL. It's an open source product and our, our business model is to sell support and consulting, consulting services. Today there are thousands of users in e-commerce, telecom, gaming, marketing, software service, almost all market segments where you need high availability, uh, you, you need to have a no loss uh, uh, of transaction, no loss of data, and scalability. Today, Galera cluster is all included, almost all Linux distros, and it's also included OpenStack distros. Latest survey by OpenStack showed that 34% of the OpenStack users are using Galera cluster for OpenStack high availability, protecting their Keystone Nova Neutron data. All big vendors like Red Hat, Rackspace, Mirantis has Galera cluster uh, in their reference architecture for for the high availability. There are three Galera variants in the marketplace. We produce Galera cluster for MySQL and uh, MariaDB and Percona then merge our version to their respective uh, MySQL variants. And uh, you can download their versions of the, of the software from their websites and Galera cluster for MySQL from galeracluster.com, uh, our website. All these versions are using Godership's Galera replication blocking. But if you want to choose between MariaDB and Percona, MariaDB is our recommended recommended preferred uh, certified partner. We work closely together on bug fixing, release cycles, new features of the product and so on. So with that I'd like to introduce Philip Stoev who will now take give you the presentation and take the mic from me. Philip go ahead. Uh, hello, my name is Philip Stoff and I will be presenting uh, the webinar today. Uh, the topic is uh, how to uh, use Galera to create geo-distributed clusters on the one. Uh, and uh, this, uh, here is our agenda. So first I'm going to give a very quick overview of Galera cluster and the features that it provides. Then we are going to discuss uh, geo-distributed databases and why they would be useful. Uh, then we're going to talk about uh, Galera's approach to, to geodistribution and to creating geodistributed databases. We will also cover uh, the configuration considerations that uh, one needs to take into account when, uh, when creating a geodistributed clusters. We're going to go over all the options that are relevant. And finally, uh, we're going to have a short demo using uh, Amazon EC2 instances uh, that are spread across several regions. So 
First, uh, very quick overview of Galera cluster. It is a synchronized, uh, synchronous multi-master replication uh, solution for MySQL. Synchronous meaning that each transaction is immediately replicated on all the nodes at commit time. So there is no opportunity for a, a, a node, for a slave node, to get uh, hopelessly behind uh, the rest of the nodes. All the nodes in the cluster move forward uh, together. It is multi-master, uh, meaning that uh, you can read and write from any node, and uh, Galera takes care of detecting and resolving any conflicts from uh, arising from uh, writing, uh, for example, conflicting transactions to different nodes. There is no need to choose uh, a specific node to write to. You can write to any, any of the nodes. Uh, it is based on replication in the sense that uh, each node has a copy of the entire data set and is able to answer any read uh, query immediately from its own copy. Uh, it is not based on partitioning or sharding of the data. And uh, Galera takes care of uh, adding new nodes to the cluster automatically. Uh, the entire data set will be uh, shipped over to the new node uh, uh, internally, so there is no need to provision your nodes by copying uh, any files over or making database dumps and restores or anything of that nature. All of this is handled internally. And replication uh, make, uh, makes sure that uh, all the nodes are, uh, are always up to date. And it is based on MySQL. Uh, it is a modified version of MySQL. Uh, we provide uh, binaries and source code for 5.5, 5.6 and 5.7 is coming up. And the underlying uh, storage that is uh, used is the InnoDB storage engine. So all your tables are InnoDB tables and your data is stored in InnoDB. And therefore, any performance uh, adjustments, any performance configuration or query optimizations that uh, you may have made to have uh, your uh, queries run fast with InnoDB are uh, immediately applicable to a Galera cluster as well. Uh, furthermore, the product has uh, some uh, very nice uh, features. It recovers from node failures within seconds, meaning that uh, if a node uh, fails, uh, this fact is detected uh, uh, within a very short timeout, and uh, the node gets evicted from the cluster, and the other nodes uh, continue to process update queries. There is no complex uh, failure detection or failure recovery procedure involved. Also, Galera provides very strong data consistency protections in a sense that uh, you, you are uh, prevented from reading stale data for your important transactions, and you're preventing from ma making any modifications uh, that would uh, make the database inconsistent or uh, cause the nodes to diverge from uh, one another. And uh, it has uh, extensive features to support cloud and one uh, clusters as we will see in this presentation. So first of all, what is a geo-distributed database cluster? It is a database where that has uh, nodes in different physical locations. Uh, that can be multiple data centers uh, within the same city, for example, multiple regions, or even across continents. And Galera works in all of those uh, situations. And uh, it is a cluster because all the nodes work together as a single entity, rather than being some master-slave relationship where one node is, uh, has the authoritative copy of the database and the other nodes uh, are sort of following uh, with Galera and uh, in the cluster in general. All the nodes uh, are equal, so they all have uh, the same uh, authoritative copy of the database. So why have a geo-distributed database? Uh, there are uh, several reasons uh, as to why one would want to have uh, the data available uh, from multiple locations. Uh, first of all, some data is, uh, is global by its nature, and we will see some examples later. And therefore, it, it makes sense for this data to be available everywhere. Also, uh, this way, data can be brought closer to the users, the users being, for example, your application servers or even the end uh, users of the database. 
So by having uh, by giving uh, each such uh, user a local copy of the database, certain operations are uh, are, are much faster. Also, with a geo-distributed database, it is possible to have uh, nodes in uh, not just in multiple availability zones within the same region, but uh, also have uh, multiple nodes in multiple regions. And uh, this uh, can be used to improve uh, the disaster preparedness and the reliability of uh, the database as well. And uh, finally, it is possible to have a database that spans multiple cloud providers, uh, which in turn uh, means that uh, your business will not be restricted to a particular cloud provider, and migration from one uh, cloud provider to another will be easier since uh, the database will already have nodes and copies in, uh, in different uh, providers, in different data centers. So uh, how does Galera do this? Uh, Galera uh, achieves uh, those uh, benefits by uh, having uh, different MySQL uh, servers which, which replicate all of the data between each other by using uh, this uh, Galera replication plugin which is a loadable library that loads inside MySQL and uh, uh, Galera takes care of uh, synchronizing all those MySQL instances so that clients can connect to any instance. And the distance between the nodes can be anywhere from, uh, from five centimeters in your rack, or it can be uh, across continents, as we will see later in the demonstration. So what Galera provides is uh, combining, the, it combines all those individual MySQL servers into a single logical MySQL database, which behaves as a single thing, uh, which just happens to have multiple connection points uh, that you can connect to, to run uh, queries. And uh, with Galera, each node, has, as mentioned, has a complete replica of the database. Uh, therefore, each read query can be answered without delay. Uh, when you do select against the uh, Galera cluster, uh, there is no delay involved in trying to find where the data is and trying to fetch the data from some remote location because all the data is available locally. And uh, this uh, setup uh, removes the latency from many operations. Uh, with the only latency that happens is when you actually commit an update transaction. So operations such as connecting to the database, running select, or running uh, any statement within a transaction prior to the commit, uh, all of that stuff happens without any latency. And the fact that uh, this, uh, this latency has been removed may even allow you to reduce the number of caching players that are required uh, for your application to, uh, to operate uh, fast enough. And with Galera, each node is a master, uh, so uh, when writing your application, uh, it is uh, uh, you can assume that you can direct the uh, right queries to any node. There is no need to track which of the nodes is primary and which of the nodes are secondary, uh, which of the nodes need to be used for updates, and which nodes are only safe to use for select queries. And uh, there is no need to have uh, dedicated procedures to promote the secondary node to a master, because each node is a master. So if a node fails, uh, that's OK. The other nodes will continue to run without any uh, administrative procedure required to ensure that the cluster continues to run. And furthermore, Galera has uh, various features that are made specifically for wide area networks. Uh, the way the network protocol works is that uh, replication only takes place at transaction commit time. So packets are exchanged over the wide area network only at transaction commit time. Uh, so uh, there is no need for this constant uh, synchronization between the servers uh, during the transaction or when selecting data. And uh, also at commit time uh, only the, the bare number of uh, round trips uh, are used to replicate the data everywhere. The protocol is not chatty in a sense that it does not 
uh, just send data back and forth multiple times uh, if there is a high ping time or network delay. Uh, then uh, Galera also uh, has topology aware replication, meaning that you can tell Galera those nodes are in this data center and those other nodes are in the other data center. And once Galera has this information, and we will see how to configure this later. Once Galera has this information, it can make uh, intelligent decisions when replicating. There is no need to send each transaction between two data centers more than once, even if you have multiple nodes at each data center. And uh, if uh, some uh, node synchronization is needed, then a node prefers to, to fetch data from its nearest neighbors rather than across the wide area network. Galera also provides traffic encryption of using SSL. And it has this feature where if a node is unreliable, meaning if a node is there in one second and not there the next second, if this pattern repeats, uh, then Galera will detect this instability and the node will be evicted from the cluster so that it does not disrupt the operation of the rest of the nodes. So it can handle both uh, 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 strict failures where the node is completely down, but it can also handle uh, some types of uh, failures where the network connectivity is just uh, uh, interrupted intermittently. Okay, then uh, we can uh, say a few words about uh, what data can take advantage of uh, such a replication scheme. As mentioned before, uh, data is uh, very frequently global in nature. So in your business, in your application, even if you have uh, application servers in uh, multiple data centers, if your website uh, is, uh, for example, served by multiple web servers in different locations, uh, you still have a lot of data that is global, that is uh, good for, to, uh, for everywhere. So this, for example, includes stuff such as authentication databases, configuration data, things like that. And uh, OpenStack, for example, takes advantage of that, uh, where if you have a multi-region OpenStack deployment, where you have OpenStack uh, installations in, in separate regions, you can still use a single Galera cluster for, the, for storing OpenStack metadata, for storing this metadata that is global, again, like your authentication information. Other, other types of data that uh, can take advantage of uh, synchronous replication are is, is data that has a high read to write ratio, meaning that uh, with Galera, all the reads are very fast because they are local and only uh, when you write to your data that is when you have uh, the replication latency required to, uh, to send your data over the network. So if your application has uh, a lot of reads and not that many writes, uh, which a lot of applications uh, have this pattern, then uh, it can uh, take advantage of uh, synchronous uh, replication without suffering uh, a major performance uh, uh, degradation. Uh, furthermore, uh, you may have data that uh, is nice to have at multiple places, but has very high consistency requirements. Uh, for example, if you have a payment system or bank accounts or anything of that nature, with a distributed Galera cluster, there will be a single logical uh, instance of this data, even though it is spread out uh, and available on multiple locations. There is no question as to which uh, location has the authoritative copy of the data. So the entire cluster is what they would call in academic literature the single source of truth for all your data. It is not a case where, for example, you have an active master copy somewhere and then another copy somewhere else and uh, you're wondering if you accidentally write to the second copy that is not the, the one that you were supposed to write, uh, or whether you're reading from a very stale uh, replica, all of those questions are uh, 
move with Galera and some of those situations do not arise. Also with uh, Galera you can handle uh, setups that have very high write availability requirements. Meaning that, for example, with traditional asynchronous replication, if your master server goes down, you have this transitional period uh, where you attempt to promote one of the slaves to be the new master, and during this period, uh, it is not safe uh, to perform uh, any writes uh, to the database. With Galera, this period is uh, vanishingly small on the order of uh, five seconds. Uh, so uh, after a, cluster, a node has been evicted from the cluster because it is no longer operational, the remaining nodes are free to resume processing transactions. So as long as the majority of the nodes in your cluster are still available, uh, no outage uh, produces a very long period during which uh, you cannot uh, update your data. Okay, then uh, it's important to say some things about how to design your cluster topology, some basic principles uh, that, uh, that are important for Galera. The first one is uh, to use an odd number of data centers. Uh, this is needed in order to avoid the so-called split-brain problem where if uh, you have, for example, two data centers and the network link between the two is uh, disconnected, neither data center can safely continue to process uh, transactions. So they will both uh, uh, stop uh, processing transactions in order to preserve uh, the integrity of the data. Because neither has the majority in the cluster, so to speak, the authority that uh, would allow it to continue operating. Uh, but if you have, for example, three data centers and one of them gets disconnected, the other two will be in the majority and they can continue processing updates until the third one rejoins or reconnects. Uh, but still, if uh, the two data center setup is required, then uh, we provide a binary called Galera Arbitrator. It's a daemon that you can run and this daemon will provide this uh, third vote, so to speak, and will be used to break those ties so that the split brain problem does not occur. Also, when planning a Galera cluster, uh, it is important to consider having multiple nodes uh, in each data center. Uh, in case uh, one of the nodes in the data center goes down, the other node will still be running and it will continue to provide a local copy of the database. And Galera supports such setups where you can have uh, three data centers, for example, and you have three nodes in each of those data centers. Uh, then uh, one thing that is different between uh, your typical cluster that is hosted in a single location and a cluster over a wide area network is latency. Uh, when Galera commits a transaction, at that moment it has to replicate all the other nodes and all the, old, the other nodes need to acknowledge that they are okay with this transaction. So this introduces this delay at commit time, uh, which is generally equal to the maximum round trip time between any, of, uh, any nodes in the cluster. Uh, we will see that later in the demonstration. Uh, if you have three nodes that are equidistant from one another in terms of round trip time, then the calculation is a bit more complicated, but in practice, for real life uh, clusters on the actual internet, uh, we have found that it is the highest latency between any two nodes that uh, determines the overall commit time of the transaction. And uh, given that uh, propagation delay, uh, a client can only commit a certain number of transactions per second. Uh, for, uh, for a very high latency, for example, 300 milliseconds, uh, you can only commit three transactions per second per client. But if you use a larger connection pool, or if you consolidate uh, updates uh, into larger transactions, then the overall throughput of the system, of course, can be much higher than three transactions per second, and we will see that during the demonstration. Uh, in multi-master setups, that's another uh, corollary from uh, the fact that you have latency on the internet. 
is that if you want to update one and the same row over and over again from multiple nodes, you can successfully do this only uh, a certain number of times per second. Uh, the other, uh, for your other updates, uh, Galera will detect a possible uh, transaction conflict and will return an error to the client. So if you have updates that uh, uh, update the same uh, record over and over again, uh, the, the application may need to be adjusted to avoid having such a hot record, or you need to force all your connections uh, for those critical updates to happen to a single node. Okay, then uh, we have uh, some uh, considerations uh, regarding throughput that are also important to take into account. So, for example, uh, in Galera, all the links that are used by the cluster uh, are important for the overall performance. So, if you have uh, three nodes in three di different data centers, uh, all the connections between tho those data centers uh, must be performant. Otherwise, Galera will slow down the commits in the cluster to what the network is actually able to handle. So instead of allowing a node to fall very behind, uh, then uh, Galera will in fact throttle the cluster. intimidated by all the options that, uh, that are going to be mentioned. I'm not sure. I think some guys are experiencing uh, audio problems. I'm not sure if you can hear me. So the first and foremost Just a second, let me try to think my audio is working anyway. I have no option but to continue. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, the option that uh, uh, we need to configure is what, called the, what we call the GMCAS segment. So all the nodes uh, that are in a single uh, data center need to have uh, the same uh, value for this option. So if you have three nodes on your East Coast, then all those three nodes need to share a value, say, one. And the nodes on your West Coast uh, data center, for example, need to share another value, like two. And uh, this will allow Galera to, uh, to know the topology of your uh, cluster, and uh, therefore all those optimizations will kick in. Uh, then uh, uh, the default values for timeouts that govern how how fast Galera will kick out a node uh, from the cluster if it does not respond to things are again fairly low by default. So you may wish to uh, to increase those further. And in fact, I forgot to do this during uh, my demonstration earlier today. And the cluster uh, ran into some network issues and it, the nodes decided to disconnect. So by having uh, higher values, 
you effectively prevent the cluster from reacting to any small network outages. Then uh, uh, it is important to size your Gcache appropriately, again in order to avoid state snapshot transfers which may happen over the wide area network and be slow. Uh, you can set up uh, auto eviction that we've described before and uh, you can also set up encryption uh, but please note that uh, encrypting the SSP is configured separately. Now then uh, on the network configuration side, the uh, Galera requires that you have uh, static uh, public IPs for all the nodes in the cluster. So uh, you should obtain those from your cloud provider. And uh, the ports that are listed in the presentations are the ports that uh, Galera requires uh, for operating. Uh, you should uh, have those ports open so that each node can connect to every other node but at the same time, just make sure that they are not open to the entire world, of course. Uh, then if uh, your network is set up so that uh, a, a server has both a public and a private IP, uh, some uh, Galera settings uh, require that you use the public IP of the node, and uh, some other settings require uh, the use of the private IP of the node, so that the Galera, Galera nodes can find each other and properly bind to the appropriate uh, network interfaces. Uh, and we have some uh, settings for that uh, relate to performance. Uh, so first we have to set uh, certain uh, values uh, that would allow Galera to just uh, have more transactions in flight at any given time. Uh, because we have this uh, pipe that has high latency, it is important for all the buffers, for all the windows to be uh, wide enough uh, so that uh, a lot of data can flow through the pipe at the same time without triggering any sort of flow control along the way. So those settings that are on the slide uh, are, uh, are recommended for, for the purpose. Uh, it is also recommended to set up a parallel apply by setting the recipe state threats uh, variable to a value higher than the default of one. Uh, then uh, we have uh, some uh, values that are important if you have large transactions, if you have transactions that contain large blocks, for example, uh, you should uh, increase uh, the sizes of those uh, buffers in MySQL in order to handle uh, such transactions without any fragmentation. And finally, at the TCP level, there are some settings that you may wish to consider. Again, in case you have uh, uh, large transactions uh, that are only infrequent. Uh, otherwise, the kernel will frequently uh, throttle the connection and then when you try to rapidly send a huge transaction through it, uh, it will not uh, go in in a single packet uh, with a single round trip time. So by giving uh, the TCP layer uh, some more buffers to work with, uh, you can avoid uh, some uh, round, trip, uh, round trips uh, during the communication. Of course, those options will uh, probably increase your uh, memory usage as well, so they need to be uh, tried out. And uh, now uh, we have arrived to the demo section of the presentation. Uh, so what we have here is uh, a setup with uh, three nodes in three different Amazon regions. We have a node in uh, US East, Brazil, and Australia. Uh, the nodes are, uh, are M4 large instances, so they are nothing to write home about. Uh, we are not aiming for uh, very high performance here, uh, but I wanted to, uh, to show some uh, latency and throughput numbers. And as you can see, the latencies between the nodes are fairly uh, substantial because of the geographic uh, distance, distance involved. Uh, so we have uh, the, the longest uh, ping time is between Brazil and Australia at uh, 319 milliseconds. So we will see that uh, this round trip time is actually uh, the con what constrains uh, the, the response time of the cluster. Okay, uh, so first uh, we are going to check our Sao Paulo uh, 
node and there we can see our my.cnf file uh, so here we have uh, the typical boilerplate uh, settings required for Galera your default storage engine should be in ODB uh, the binary format uh, should be row and in ODB auto of mode should be equal to 2 and then we have uh, some settings related to InnoDB performance. Uh, uh, we are not uh, optimizing uh, InnoDB performance through the roof here. We just wanted to make sure that uh, the disk uh, is not, uh, does not play an important part in the benchmarks. And uh, we have taken the liberty of using this uh, InnoDB flush lock the transaction commit option and set it to 2, meaning that uh, InnoDB will not flush every transaction to disk uh, at commit time. Uh, in this case, and uh, of course depending on your uh, requirements, uh, this option may be safe to use because we have nodes in different data centers and we do not expect them to fail, to fail them, uh, to, to, for all the nodes to fail at the same time together. So not flushing the transactions to disk uh, at every commit uh, may be a trade-off that uh, is acceptable. Uh, we have uh, those two options uh, that we need in order to uh, handle better large transactions and produce a smaller number of binary locked events per transaction. And then we have a few Galera settings. Uh, we have the usual paths to the Galera library. Uh, then we have uh, a list of uh, the nodes that participate in the cluster. Uh, you can note here that those are public IPs uh, that I obtained from Amazon by requesting an elastic IP and then binding it to the instance. So that they are static public IPs that I can then put in the configuration file. Uh, same applies for the node address. Again, it is the public IP. Uh, but then uh, here we have this option that requires the private IP of the node. So those are important to get right. Uh, other options that we have is GKS size uh, set to 2 gigabytes, again in order to uh, prevent uh, SSDs in favor of IST. We have configured uh, segment equals to 2 because uh, our Sao Paulo region would be region with an ID of 2 and uh, we have uh, some options relating to uh, to flow control as we mentioned before this allows a lot of Galera packets a lot of Galera transactions to be in flight at any given time uh, so that flow control does not kick in and throttle the cluster because of uh, the high latency is involved and finally we have uh, options relating to timeouts we have increased the timeout so that uh, will trigger an eviction of a dead node from the cluster to 30 seconds. Okay, so with this configuration, now let's uh, run a few queries to see how we are doing. So first of all, uh, we have uh, some tables. We have a table with the 10,000 rows. So uh, for example, I can do an update of this table that will update 10,000 rows and we will see how much time Galera takes to execute this, uh, this transaction. Okay, so uh, we have uh, for our first execution, we updated 10,000 rows in one second. And this means that this transaction was actually safely replicated and certified on all those string machines in the cluster. So that happened within one second. And now, as the TCP buffers have actually uh, resized to, re to be to provide more performance for the TCP layer, we can see that the actual time has dropped even further. So uh, again, uh, we have a latency of uh, 330 milliseconds between our furthest nodes, and yet we are able to push this fairly large transaction to all those nodes within uh, uh, approximately the same uh, same uh, time. So uh, 
this is one thing, one test that we can do. Let's try a test where we push a large blob again in a single transaction. So here we have a table called blob table, which has a field with a long, a long blob field. And what we are going to do is we are going to insert a, a 4 megabyte blob into this field. The syntax is a bit uh, mysql ish but essentially we are creating a string that contains 4 million characters, and then we insert it into this table, and let's see what happens. OK, so uh, the time is one second on our first run, and again one second further down. So we are pushing a 4 megabyte transaction across uh, this wide area network within one second, uh, which I think is, uh, is a fairly decent uh, uh, performance, uh, even though it can be tuned further by even further extending uh, all the buffers that are involved in the process. And uh, for example, if we just create a table, uh, we can see that the simplest query, the DDL query, takes only 30, uh, 340 milliseconds to run. So this is exactly equal to our maximum round trip time. So uh, this is uh, generally how Calera behaves uh, for those queries. And now we can uh, switch to our uh, Virginia server, and we can run some uh, throughput benchmarks there. So we are using Sysbench, uh, which is a tool that is widely used in, my, uh, in the MySQL community to, uh, to, to measure performance. And uh, what this tool does is it takes a query from this uh, script file and it runs it uh, uh, multiple times and gives uh, averages for response time and for, uh, for throughput. So in this case, as we can see from the script file, we are running a simple update query using a primary key. So this is a single row update. And our table size in this case is 10 million rows, and the table has been created already. So uh, the only thing that remains is to actually run the benchmark. So first we start it with a single thread, so just to see how it goes. So what is going to happen is it will run the transaction for five seconds, and it will print out uh, the averages. Uh, so what we see, it is able to do three transactions per second. Uh, which we expect because uh, each uh, round trip time is, uh, is 330 milliseconds, and uh, it takes uh, that number of milliseconds to, uh, to, make this, to, to commit this transaction. So uh, in here, we are limited by the overall ability of a single client to run transactions. Uh, three transactions per second is, of course, not a very good a result, but it is unavoidable when we use a single client. But now, if we run the same thing with, uh, let me try very optimistically, 500 clients, now we will see hopefully different numbers. We need to give it some time for all those uh, clients to, to ramp up and the benchmarks to, to start running smoothly. But we see after all the clients have started, uh, the numbers are stabilized, and they say that we are pushing 1,400 transactions per second, and our response time is slightly higher than the, the minimum that can be achieved uh, because of uh, the latency. And again, those are uh, 1,400 updates per second that are replicated in real time to all the other nodes in the cluster and uh, they are certified everywhere, so it is not simply a matter of uh, shipping the data as fast as possible. It is also a matter of uh, making sure that the data is consistent and that there are no conflicts with any transactions that could uh, happen uh, at the same time on some other server. So Galera is able to do all of this effort uh, within the, the time that is uh, 
the physical restriction of the medium, so to speak, the, the physical restriction that the speed of light imposes. Okay, so this concludes the demonstration that I wanted to make. So now uh, I'm going to check out the questions and uh, see how we are going there and uh, hopefully answer some of them. Okay, so the first is uh, uh, how do you restart a Galera cluster? A uh, person says, if I do simple MySQL restart, it errors staying out, it's not a primary. Uh, and therefore, uh, one needs to use the bootstrap option. Uh, yes, what happens with Galera is that when you shut down your entire cluster, in order to start it again, you have to bootstrap the first node. So you have to start it with this uh, a separate option that indicates to Galera that this is the first node of a new cluster, so to speak, because after all the nodes have been shut down, the previous cluster logically has stopped existing. The data is still there, but uh, you need to start your nodes starting from the node that was shut down last. You need to use that node for bootstrapping, and then you start the other nodes as usual, and then all the nodes will rejoin. So uh, once, if you need to stop all the nodes, consider this as, uh, as if you have uh, destroyed the entire cluster and you need to, to build it up again. Uh, and then the next question is about the feature where updates and transactions are only sent to the data center, to each data center once. The question is, is this done through multicast or uh, uh, with through multicast packets? The answer is no. What happens is that each data center elects one node that will act as a relay. So uh, using TCP, standard TCP, the transaction will arrive at this node, and then this node will replicate the transaction to the other nodes that are in the data center. Next question is, uh, what is considered a majority of nodes when there are node and data center failures? Well, majority of nodes meaning uh, simple majority in numbers. So if you have uh, three nodes in one of your data centers and two nodes in the second one, if the second data center goes down, the nodes from the first one being more numerically, more, more in number, will consider themselves uh, the majority, and those nodes will uh, think it is safe to process further updates. So by, uh, by manipulating the number of nodes in each data center, or by manipulating the weight each node has in those calculations, and we have a variable for that as well, you can achieve a particular uh, payover behavior that uh, is more suitable for your, for your application. Uh, next question is, uh, are there any plans to have a synchronous read nodes available? Uh, what you can do with Galera is use the entire Galera cluster as a single logical unit and make it a master in traditional asynchronous replication to some traditional MySQL slave servers. And then with those slave servers you can do whatever you please they will receive all the updates that are made on the cluster, on any node of the cluster, and uh, they will apply them locally using a synchronous application. And next question is, is it possible to configure a selective database? Uh, I guess the question is, is it possible to replicate only certain databases? Uh, no, the answer is no, Galera replicates all updates on all databases. If you want only some uh, databases to be replicated, then uh, a synchronous replication can provide filtering for you. Uh, next question is, is it possible to configure Galera cluster to support uh, synchronous and semi-synchronous replication and synchronous replication at the same time? A Galera cluster alone only does synchronous replication, but you can use it as a master or as a slave to, uh, tr to asynchronous or semi-synchronous replication. You can have this hybrid setup. 
uh, depending on your requirements. Next question is, apart, uh, apart from the reliability of VPNs, would setting up Galera using a VPN and private networks simplify the configuration? Uh, yes, if you can give all your server IPs on the same uh, logical network uh, without having public and private IPs, then most certainly this is going to simplify uh, configuration. It is going to simplify uh, administration in the longer term and debugging. One thing to have in mind is that VPN introduces yet another layer where packets may be fragmented. Uh, so you may need to make uh, some uh, more detailed performance measurements as to how this affects uh, your performance. And as you mentioned, reliability may be a concern, so monitoring uh, of uh, at the VPN layer would also be a good thing to have. Uh, next question is, uh, uh, could you explain the Galera Arbitrator? Uh, the Galera Arbitrator is uh, basically a process that participates in the cluster. It receives all the replication events, all the messages and everything, but it does not uh, have a database behind it. So it only participates in uh, voting, in quorum decisions and things like that. And it is used uh, only in the case where you have an odd number of, uh, an even number of note, nodes. And by adding Galera Arbitrator, the total membership of, membership of the cluster is now an odd number. So uh, you can no longer get this split brain problem that was discussed earlier. Uh, so uh, the, the follow-up question is if uh, there is a physical limitation that requires the use of two data centers, uh, how, how can you configure that? I'm not sure if you guys can hear me, uh, but I will continue answering. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the suggestion is there are three options here. One is to use the arbitrator. Uh, the other is to have more nodes in one data center or the other. Or uh, there is the option where uh, uh, you give uh, certain uh, nodes in one of the data centers a higher weight when it comes to
I'm not sure if you can guys can hear me. Uh, my webinar software indicated there is an audio problem along the way. Uh, but I think uh, I answered uh, all the questions uh, that I had on the list. So hopefully you were here, you were able to hear the answers. Uh, if not, uh, the audio, will, the, the webinar recording will be made available on the internet. Uh, hopefully the audio will be there for you to listen to. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for joining and uh, uh, I will now disconnect.